the first project, I'll be using three of these long wooden canvases from Dollar Tree. I cut and I ripped the fabric off of the canvas and I paint these white. I applied two coats and it just seems like acrylic paint always shows up best on these. After the paint was completely dry, I applied a coat of Mod Podge and pink glitter. I'll be sure to include the name of this color on the screen. This was my first time using it and I really do love this color. So I started on the inside of the frame and I worked my way on the outside. When you're doing this part, you want to be sure to only cover the walls and not get any of the Mod Podge and glitter on the rim of these. So the first layer, I felt like it didn't really cover very much at all. So I wanted to let the Mod Podge completely dry and go back with another layer just on the outside of these. I left the inside with just one layer. I let all of these sit in front of a fan for a few minutes before adding a final coat of Mod Podge as a sealer to prevent the glitter from shedding. When everything dried, I glued clear acrylic gems from Dollar Tree around the rim. I used Gorilla Hot Glue and I placed each gem standing straight up side by side all the way along the rim on just two of the three canvases. Once you get those glued on, allow the glue to sit and cure for a little while before you move to your next step just to prevent from knocking your gems off. Next, I lined the canvases the way that I liked and I glued Jenga blocks through the inside of these, connecting all this together. So I started with one Jenga block and I connected that from the middle to the bottom one. And then I added another Jenga block from the middle to the top one. You wanna be sure that your Jenga block is uh, on the slender side, do not, or on its side when you're gluing it, don't glue the Jenga flat face down because it won't fit between the gems. I just repeat this for the other side so that this is all one piece. I painted eight more of the Jenga blocks from the Tumble Tower game and you can get this at Dollar Tree by the way. I painted these white with white acrylic paint and then I glued them together in pairs to give me a double stack of four Jenga blocks. I just lay my box on its side and I glue the double stack blocks on each bottom corner as my legs. And then once those are glued, I stand it upright and all you have to do now is add some bling if you want bling or decorate your legs. And that's all there is to this DIY. For my next DIY, I'll be using two of the large easels and you can get those from Dollar Tree. The first thing I did was apply pressure to remove the uh, set from the hinges. So I just kind of pushed up with one hand and pulled with the other. And the first one just popped off really, really easy. The second one, not so much. I didn't want to force it. I kind of heard something pop a little bit. So I just stopped. Essentially, all you want to do is use your hot knife to melt the hinges off anyway. They do not have to be disconnected to do that. I prefer them to be disconnected, but that is not necessary. Anyway, if you don't have a hot knife, you can just simply um, use an old knife, get the blade warm by placing it on a stove, and then it'll just right through that plastic and you can cut these off. So once my hinges are removed, I go back and I smooth out any rough places in the plastic. This needs to be flat and smooth for our glue. Take two pieces and lay them in front of you side by side and use something round like a lid, a bowl, or for me, I used a four inch embroidering ring to draw out my arch in the center. Then I go out on the side with my ring and I trace a line to trim the width. Since it's see-through, I just stack them up on top of each other to make sure I have all my lines in the exact same place. I hold one half of the piece and follow along the line that I drew with my hot knife. I want to make a cut on both sides, front and back, here at the top where the lip is because it's a lot thicker. And then just follow along that line. When I got about halfway, I went out a little further, making the arch a tiny bit wider. Since I went outside of my line, I make adjustments on my other three pieces so that they all match and look the same. The easiest way to make this cut or the smoothest is to hold your knife still in one hand and move the plastic 
piece with your other. So this plastic is really thin, so you should be able to just hold pressure and follow along the line. Next, trim the other line to make the bottom shorter. Again, melt front and back where it's a little thicker at the top and then hold your knife with one hand and guide your piece with the other. Once I made all the cuts, I go back on each one and I smooth them out, making sure that there is no rough plastic parts sticking up. Now it's time to start gluing everything together. So I glue two pieces side by side using hot glue. I don't use a lot of hot glue. I just mainly use a little towards the top pieces. When those are dry, I add my third piece to the very center. Make sure everything is even so I stand the structure straight up before the glue is completely dry to make sure I don't need to make adjustments to see how it's standing. Once it's standing even, I let the glue go ahead and dry. Once it's dry, I add my fourth and final piece to the center to the other side the exact same way. After everything is all glued together, I use my hot knife one more time in the center arches just to check and make sure those are all nice, flush, and even. Next, I use Mod Podge and silver glitter to decorate. I say on the inside where the plastic is thin, I don't get towards the lip or the, out or the outer edge because I want my adhesive or bling to stick when I decorate the outside plastic. I decorate these with adhesive bling wrap and I just go around the outer edges and the inside seam or the joints where they meet in the center. And I also go around the arches on each side and the bottoms. Once that is finished, then I start working on my railing. I'm going to use dowel pieces and what I do is just take them and lay them across the front. Mark them where the dent is so the tower can kind of rest there. So I just make my marks on my dowel and then take a pair of scissors and just make a little indention in the dowel and just snip the dowel in half. Next, I glue the dowels together to create a square shape. Only glue three of your four corners and then paint it. To glue my dowels, I glued together two to create two L's, and then I glued those together in one corner, making sure to leave one of the corners open. Next, I glue acrylic gems from Dollar Tree around the rail. Now, I already have some that are pre-glued together side by side. This makes it look so much nicer and cleaner. Plus, it's a lot easier when you're working on projects like this one. Once I have the gems covering all four sides, I use the open corner to get um, my railing around the tower. Then all that's left to do is center it and then you can glue it. Later, I did go back and I just decided to add another row of gems and I just simply glued those on top and just stacked them. I also add gems above the rail. I just go with one in each corner all the way around the tower. For the top, I just snip a little piece off of a dowel and I painted that silver and then I add bling wrap around it. Next, I glue one end of the dowel to the top of the tower I hold it a minute or two until it grabs before gluing an acrylic gem to the very top to complete this look. I really love this. I've said this so many times. I've wanted mine to create. It's totally different and it's made with way different materials and it's much, much larger. It's more like a tall centerpiece. I came across one of these online and it was just absolutely breathtaking. And these run about $300. Depending on your response on this one, I may make a large super glam Eiffel Tower. So yeah, be sure to let me know your thoughts on that.